Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, in this lecture, I would like to share part 2 of Mouth Preparation and Complete Denture. So, uh, we have already discussed the part 1 of uh, Mouth Preparation. So, if you are uh, not watched that video, then you can uh, please watch that video. Okay. So, uh, coming to part 2. Uh, we have already uh, discussed that the surgical methods are soft tissue procedures and hard tissue procedures. So, soft tissue procedures uh, have been discussed uh, in the previous video. So, the soft tissue procedures are removal of a hypertrophic maxillary labial frenum, then lingual frenum, then correction of prominent buccal frenum, removal of papillary hyperplasia, and treatment of papillus fissuratum, and finally vestibuloplasty. This vestibuloplasty will be deal, uh, dealt with the uh, separate section in the coming videos. Today, we will discuss heart tissue procedures in detail. So, what are those heart tissue procedures? They are extraction or alveoloplasty, removal of ridge undercuts, man management of prominent mylohyoid and internal oblique ridges, reduction of maxillary tuberosity, treatment of sharp spiny ridges, excision of torre or exostosis. Procedure is the extraction of alveolar plastic. So the irregularities of the alveolar ridge found either at the time of extraction or after healing. It requ both require recontouring before final prosthetic construction. So in the first picture it shows the uh, at the time of extraction and in the second picture after healing. So first picture shows irregular alveolar ridge during extraction and the second picture it shows the Irregular alveolar ridge post extraction. Okay. So the next uh, in the next picture it shows the uh, bony undercuts which occur in different locations in either edangular starch that is the uh, maxilla and mandibles. So here there are some bony undercuts are present. Okay, in the maxillary and the mandibular arches. Okay. And in process dentures, periphery is also. So, in the process dentures, periphery is also the undercuts are occur. Okay. And they may be taken advantage of uh, so as to enhance the dentures in retention via selective reduction of acrylic crescent border. That is uh, one of the tuberosity undercuts and slight modification of the anterior ones. A resultant change in the path of insertion and withdrawal of the processes will then be required. In the next picture, it shows the ridge undercuts. Here, it is the unilateral undercut and here it is the bilateral undercut. So, in the, uh, in the in this picture, it shows undercut in the anterior region. So, here the undercut is there. So, it can be tackled by change in the path of danger insertion. So, the uh, danger insertion is, uh, the path of the danger insertion is changing. Uh, so, the undercut in the anterior region can be tackled. In the second picture, it shows the bilateral undercuts, which require surgical correction on one side to enable comfortable denture insertion. So, uh, the ridge undercuts, small ridge undercuts from the ridge crest and undercuts only in the anterior labial region do not require any surgical intervention. So, in this picture, here, uh, do not uh, require any surgical intervention, only uh, by ch changing the path of denture insertion. But in this picture, it shows the bilateral undercuts need correction at, at least on one side. Coming to this picture, here the alveolar ridge undercuts are shown in the parts A and B. So, in this uh, in this A, it is the alveolar ridge undercuts are shown here and here. Okay. And these bony morphological variations may be regarded as a clinical nuisance. However, they also may be readily recruited into a denture's retention objectives via planned modification of the acrylic resin flanges. So, uh, here is the planned modification of acrylic resin flanges. It is seen in fig figure C. Okay. So, coming to the management of prominent mylohyoid and internal oblique ridges. These internal oblique and mylohyoid ridges are seen in the lingual surfaces of the mandible. So, these uh, ridges are seen in the lingual surface of the mandible here. Here, these are the seen. These are seen. Okay. Sometimes, they become very prominent due to 
bridge resorption. Okay, and uh, uh, the sharp edge which produces actually pain in that area. So uh, the patient presents the uh, presents pain. Okay, uh, due to the sharp bridge. Then actually they should be ready uh, surgically reduced when there is a repeated ulceration or a loss of peripheral seal. And the mucoperiosteal flap which is neglected and the prominence is removed with rotary burr or bone file. It limits the extension of lingual flange of a lower denture. So in the in these two pictures it shows prominent mylohyoid ridge. Okay. And then the uh, next picture it shows the reduction of maxillary tuberosity. This is the next uh, heart tissue procedure. So this is the picture showing oversized maxillary tuberosity and here it is the picture showing the prominent tuberosity which interferes with the inter arch space denture extension and mandibular movements so here the pendulous tuberosity with undercuts is encountered unilaterally or bilaterally and they interfere with inter arch space denture insertion and extension and the mandibular movements this requires surgical correction if they interfere with normal denture function and the bilateral undercuts will require surgical contouring at least unilaterally so okay so in this picture it shows the enlarged tuberosity or is may be associated with so called kelly syndrome okay in the kelly it's also called kelly syndrome wherein the anterior part of the maxillary complete denture which rotates into an upward position so the anterior part of the maxillary complete denture uh, rotates into an upward position while the posterior tuberosity part appears to grow downwards and this morphological predicament is usually associated with untreated kennedy class 1 type of mandibular dentition and associated enlarged tuberosities may need to be surgically reduced to accommodate the replacement max uh, replacement mandibular posterior dentition so these are the enlarged tuberosity okay in a and b Okay, then uh, uh, we already said uh, it should be surgically corrected. So, uh, here it is the flabby mobile tuberosity which should be excised. Okay, uh, uh, excised as shown in the part D. This is the um, method of excision. Okay. So the um, in th in this picture it shows the incisions which is made in the fibrous tuberosity. Okay, then a wedge of fibrous tissue is removed in the picture B. Okay, and in C incisions made under the mucosa for removal of all unwanted fibrous connective tissue. So incisions made under the mucosa for the removal of all unwanted fibrous connective tissue, and in D and E. Thin mucosal flaps are fitted, trimmed and sutured. Okay. So, this is the picture showing excision of a mobile tuberosity. Okay. So, coming to the treatment of sharp spiny ridges. Okay. And these are the um, knife edged ridges. That is seen most commonly in the mandible. Okay mandibular region or lower anterior region because of the rapid labial and lingual resorption. So, uh, hence it leads to hypermobile tissue covering the ridge which gets trapped between denture and the sharp bony ridge which causing denture soreness, discomfort and instability. Mayer who described three types of sharp ridges that is bracer like ridge and uh, sawtooth ridge and discrete sp uh, spiny bony projections and this is the picture showing sagittal section showing the knife edge ridge in mandibular anteriors okay so in this this picture shows razor, uh, razor like the ridge here it shows the discrete sharp bony projections and here it is the sawtooth ridge okay uh, so, coming to the last section of this video, okay, that is the excision of tore or exostosis. 
Sutore and exostosis, they are relatively common, benign, slowly growing bony projections of maxilla or mandible. They attain their maximum size by the third decade and of unknown etiology. When it occurs in the midline of palate, it is called torus palatinus. And when it occurs in the mandible, that is lingual aspect of mandible, then it is called torus mandibularis. So here it is the torus palatinus and here it is the torus mandibularis. Okay, this is the torus palatinus and here it is the torus mandibularis. Okay, so in this picture it shows different size than located maxillary and mandibular torus. Here it is a torus palatinus, okay, and it can be managed by relief design in the acrylic dressed denture basis. So, in the picture B, it shows relief design is given in the dangers to accommodate that torus, okay, or to relieve that torus. So, or else by the surgical excision. And the surgical excision is indicated if the torus is large, particularly large. Extend distally in the maxilla so as to com compromise the efficacy of posterior palatal seal or else preclude the desired basis seat coverage for a mandibular process. And in the, this picture shows the max, uh, maxillary tore and the mandibular tore sagittal section. And this picture shows different size than located exostosis which may interfere with the Comfortable and convenient wearing of dentures and the insertion or withdrawal. Okay, and uh, in this picture, uh, in the third picture, that uh, it shows the enlarged genial tubercles which may encroach on the available potential denture bearing area in the mandible, which are infrequently encountered but may still have to be surgically reduced if the denture stability is compromised. The problem can now be readily avoided by relying on the implant abutments for. Desired retention and support. So that's all for today's discussion. In this video, we have discussed various heart tissue procedures in detail. And in the next lecture, we will continue the part 3 of mouth preparation. Thanks for watching, and I wish my dear viewers. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year 2021. Thank you.